So picture this, Bill Ackman, billionaire hedge fund manager, asks you to invest in his idea. You're a bit hesitant, but hey, it's Bill Ackman, so you want to know more about it. So you ask, what's the idea? To which he answers, well, you'll have to wait and see. But it is very promising. That's sort of how SPACs are, and it's not just finance people that are involved, it's also athletes like Serena Williams, rappers like Jay-Z, and even politicians like Paul Ryan. What's up everyone, it's Kenji here, and in this video I thought I'd explain what a SPAC is. So firstly we'll look at a definition of a SPAC and how it differs from a traditional IPO. Secondly we'll look at why they've gotten so popular recently. And lastly we'll go over some of the concerns with SPACs. So what is a SPAC? And before we get into that, I do need to give you a bit of background. So generally, when a strong business is rapidly growing, there comes a point where they decide to raise a ton of money to continue with that growth by going public. Basically, that means that they sell their shares in the public markets to investors, so the stock market, and in return, they get cash for that. Now, traditionally, that process is known as the IPO, which stands for an initial public offering. Now, this process is both lengthy and expensive. You need to hire an investment bank to help, you need to file a ton of paperwork for regulatory approval, you need to pitch to investors in a roadshow that you're going public so they get excited and want to buy your shares. So give or take, that takes about one year of planning and another further six months for the actual IPO process. On top of that, you need to pay the investment banks around 3.5% to 7% of the IPO proceeds, not to mention all the legal, accounting and other fees involved. And the management team has to go through this whole process while at the same time running the business as they would usually, so making sure the customers are happy, all the stakeholders are happy, and so on and so forth. So it's quite a headache for the management team. So they're all stressed out about this, and that's when someone mentions SPACs as a way to bypass all that red tape that goes into an IPO. And here's how it works. Step one, a famous person like hedge fund manager Bill Ackman and his management team, known as the sponsors, set up a shell company or a SPAC, meaning it's got nothing in it. So no operation, no business model, no employees, nothing. That's also why they're sometimes referred to as blank check companies in that you're giving away your money blindly. So step two, the sponsor, in this case Bill Ackman and his management team, go out on a roadshow to try to get investors to put money in their shell company that's got nothing in it. But they do promise them that once we have this money, we'll invest it very wisely by acquiring a phenomenal business. And all the investors are like, hmm, why would I invest here? So Bill says, well, because it's me, Bill Ackman. I'm not a billionaire for no reason. My track record speaks for itself. So the investors have faith in him. They say that they're interested in investing. And Bill Ackman goes ahead and files for an IPO for that SPAC. And the regulators are like, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Where are you going so fast? Give us all your financials. We need to audit them. So Bill Ackman sends them the financials, but there's really nothing in it because, well, it's a shell company, so it had no previous operations. So that whole process is super streamlined and it takes about 8 weeks because, well, there's just nothing to audit. Then, once a SPAC IPOs and raises all the money that it needed, Bill Ackman needs to honor his side of the deal, which is to acquire a great private company. Now, during that time, that money is going to be placed in a trust, just in case something happens for security reasons. And Bill Ackman's going to have a total of 24 months to find a company to acquire. If that doesn't happen, then he'll need to return that money to all the investors. So assuming Bill Ackman does find a company to acquire and that acquisition is completed with no problems, the publicly traded SPAC then merges with the target company and becomes public in the process, effectively replacing the traditional IPO. This process is also known as de spacking Once the acquisition is announced, the investors actually have a choice of either keeping their money invested because they like the company that they've acquired, or they can actually decide to liquidate, so cash out and get their money back in case they didn't like the company that's been acquired by the sponsor. And there you go, the private company that's been acquired has effectively bypassed the whole traditional IPO process and is already trading in the market. Alright, now that we understand what a SPAC is, let's look into why they've become so popular. Now the funny thing about SPACs is that they're not new, they've been around since the 1990s, but they just had a bad reputation for scamming investors. Ever since the SEC, which is the Securities and Exchange Commission, the main regulator in the US, actually decided to step in and regulate the market, which is why in the past decade or so they've actually been growing more and more. And here's how their trajectory looks like. There was hardly any SPACs in the early 2000s, dropping down all the way to one SPAC in 2009. But in 2020, it began to really take off with 248 SPACs and then 419 up until September 2021. And that's actually more than the number of traditional IPOs. 
As for why they're so popular all of a sudden, to be honest, nobody really knows the answer to that. But the pandemic and its uncertainty certainly helped, especially because in a traditional IPO, it might take over a year or two to actually get to trading in the stock market. And by then, maybe there's no more interest in your company, right? On the other hand, through a SPAC, you're able to bypass that whole process and you're able to go much faster. Then on the other hand, there's also the billionaire investors, like what might be the case of Chama Palihapitiya. I think that's how it's pronounced. Belakman or Richard Branson also hopping on the ship. Now, some of the most renowned companies that have merged with SPACs include QuantumScape, which creates batteries for electric vehicles, Virgin Orbit, which launches satellites, and DraftKings, a sports betting operator. However, the biggest SPAC was led by Bill Ackman and it raised $4 billion, but after some lawsuits, it's still in the process of finding a company to acquire. All right, let's look at some of the concerns that have been voiced with SPACs. And when you invest in a traditional company, you can look through their business model, you can see their financial statements, as that's publicly free information. So you can see how much sales they've had, how much debt they're in, their profits, and so on and so forth. But in the case of a SPAC, there is no such information. All you really see is the famous person that's out there trying to promote it. That might be Bill Ackman, it might be Chama Palihabatia, or whoever else. So you're really betting on that person's ability. And even though they may be remarkable people, at the end of the day, it's still a blind investment. Another concern which was voiced by Lloyd Blankfein, who's the former CEO of Goldman Sachs, is that the due diligence process is nowhere near as rigorous as it is for a traditional IPO. But where was the process and diligence that we all associated with a rigorous IPO diligence process. For example, in 2019, Adam Newman's WeWork was set for an IPO, but ended up withdrawing after a growing investor concern on the business model and its eccentric founder. That was primarily due to the scrutiny of investors looking to invest in the IPO. But you fast forward to two years later and WeWork is going public using a SPAC to bypass all that heavy due diligence process that it failed two years prior. And sure, a lot has changed for WeWork in that two-year period, whether it be their management team or their business model, but overall, it's still something to keep an eye out for. Oh, and let's not forget about Nikola, the electric truck company that went public via a SPAC. Currently, its founder, who no longer works at the company, by the way, is facing criminal charges for defrauding investors. And among other things in Nikola, you might remember the marketing campaign where the truck was going downhill because it couldn't run under its own propulsion. And the very last concern is the incentive structure. How it usually works is the sponsor gets to buy a 20% stake called a promote at a heavy discount. Usually regular shareholders pay $10 for a share, but sponsors pay a nominal price of less than $0.1 for the same share. So essentially nothing. That means that if the SPAC raises 100 million, the sponsor takes home 20. So it's really in the sponsor's interest to find a deal as opposed to not finding anything and having to return that money after two years. When you think about it, that means that sometimes they can settle for acquiring a company that's less than ideal just to make sure they get their big paycheck. And even if that company does poorly, it's still better than having to return that money back to investors after two years, having gotten nothing in return. Overall, as with anything else, there's going to be some great players in SPACs and some very poor ones too. So make sure you do your research. That's all for this video. If you'd like me to explain something else in the future, do let me know down in the comments. And hit that like, hit that subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you in the next one.